the Happy Families Podcast. It's the podcast for the time poor parent who just wants answers now. It's not just schools that need to talk about consent. It is every level of us and we must start much earlier. And now here's the stars of our show, my mum and dad. Hello, this is Dr. Justin Coulson. I'm the author of six books about how to make your family happier. And I'm here with Kylie, my wife and mum to our six daughters. How much fun was yesterday's conversation with Maggie Dan? Just so eye-opening. I I absolutely loved it and I'm really looking forward to doing it again today. Australia's queen of common sense. If you missed yesterday's podcast, we'll pop it into the show notes or just jump into your podcast feed and go back and have a listen. Really illuminating conversation about raising boys. Maggie is the author of a bunch of great books, including Mothering Our Boys and the new one, From Boys to Men. And we're going to continue our conversation with you, Maggie. Thanks for joining us for the second day in a row. (laughs) Thank you so much. After a great conversation yesterday, I want to make the conversation a bit trickier today and spin around towards the topic of consent and respect. So Maggie, my first question is, how do parents help their boys to navigate these challenges? All right. The very first thing I want to start with is what we've done in the last 15 to 20 years since the digital world arrived is we've dropped off the rails of the bridge that we used to have in place around our our boys and and our girls in that ways. So boys find out about the world through that lens now. And then sadly, that's that's a lens that lets them see really violent content, which desensitizes them. They do see um, pornography that's very free, that's um, demeaning of women. It's all about power and it's giving them mixed messages. But also they're spending hours and hours in their bedrooms, not around dining tables, chatting to parents or uncles or aunts or they're, they're actually dropping their participation in sports. So all the influences that were what I call lighthouse figures that help shape their conscience have dropped away and it's really, really been difficult. So what is happening is, yes, they are being misled in this direction and we have to all step up. And I wrote a really powerful blog about, <clears throat> excuse me, around it's not just schools that need to do, talk about consent. It is every level of us and we must start much earlier. So you can't just expect the health teacher to just drop it in. And also what we know in adolescence, um, you know, they do start, they're meant to push back from us. They question what we say. They want more autonomy. They want to have fun. And they want to take risks. They've biologically got no GABA in their brain, which means their impulses are even worse than they were when they were three and four. And we need to see that many boys are incredibly confused And I kind of see there's four groups of boys out there at the moment. There are the ones who are genuinely, like you said, tenderhearted, have been raised with people who've spoken about what's the way um, to initiate anything that's of an intimate level. Um, And they are, yep, making the right choices. We have the second group, and they're the ones in bedrooms gaming who've decided, I don't want to go out with my friends because I know that I could be led into stuff I don't want to do. So I'm going to stay here because I'm not near alcohol, drugs or inappropriate behaviour with girls. The third group are the boys who know it's wrong and do it anyway. And that's a small group that is contaminating everything. And the fourth is the boy who felt that he learnt online what he needed to do and has now realised that wasn't okay and is now feeling really bad. So we need to make sure the conversation is kind of, uh, you know, nuanced in all of those directions And I think the thing is, the message is that um, being sexually intimate is something that needs to be valued in relationships. One of the shifts that's happened via, I believe, the digital world mainly, is that sex is just something you do, right? It's just an activity. So many boys have that notion, whereas um, that's not something for a girl. You know, someone enters their body. That is that is not something that's an activity you do lightly. And I think there's we have big conversations and I notice it's starting to change. My challenge is parents need to have these conversations. I know they're all squirming, um, but we have to be part of that and we have to be part of it in our, in our school environments, in our um, community environments, that we have this really clear message that everyone deserves to be respected. And that, you know, that, that, that rule, that three-way three rule would have been handy to have by now. Um, but I am really worried because I hear a lot of boys just saying they're so disillusioned with how badly they're being portrayed, um, you know, made to look awful. They were the enemy in, when they were little boys and now we're all bad now. And that's causing enormous angst. And we already have really serious concerns about heightened levels of uh, mental Ill- illness, and I don't even want to mention the suicide word, but we really have to be very careful how we manage this and gather our boys together and tell them that we can love them 
even when they make mistakes. Maggie, I'm I'm just I'm loving this conversation and in spite of the fact that I'm a mother of girls, my mother heart right now is just breaking for these boys. Yeah. Um as we talk about the way, you know, as a society, um, they are being raised. And, you know, I'm listening to the conversation we're having around these really, really difficult conversations that we have to have with our children. And, you know, you talked about these four different groups of boys um, and the kinds of, um, I guess, the way their brains are working and the challenges. And is is part of the, the challenge that we're experiencing with the minority, acknowledging that this is definitely a minority, because parents aren't stepping up and having these conversations, or is this a much bigger problem? Good question. I think it's a much bigger problem. I think um, we I, I've been talking a while about digital abandonment, that, that the phone has actually really stepped into parents' hands just as much as it is in our teens' hands. So we're actually less connected. We spend less time. If there's one gift that came from 2020, it was that somehow or other we got four people back together a little. Um, and I think that that role of key um, key people in our lives, what I call lighthouse figures, and I know you write the importance as well about aunties for girls. Um, I have been, uh, you know, the auntie, unofficial auntie for many boys, but I think it's a collective parenting that's dropped, Kylie, that we, we kind of don't seem to bat for as much for other people's kids. Whereas what we know is as our teens push us back, what they need is other people's, other grown-ups in that space who they will listen to. And that's part of my challenge in the end of the book is we all have to step forward and, and say, right, this is a time we've got to all step forward now collectively and say, look, I'm, you know, I'm going to watch out for my boys, you know, mates, because they'll listen to me, whereas he won't listen to his mum. So I can suggest he washes the grease, uh, greasy hair or wear some deodorant and I won't get the kickback that he would get if his mum or his dad did it. So we've got to go back, and I say it's crazy, but the more we get back to traditional kinship ways of raising children, the healthier we all are because parents also need growing ups around them supporting them during this time. And the world's become so judgy and nasty and I do believe that the negative effects of social media impacts our boys and our girls deeply. And it's something that, you know, is a whole new paradigm. It's like an experiment on humanity. Um, and it doesn't matter how much we talk about it, that we all get caught up with it, don't we? We all make moments where we wish we hadn't said something or hadn't responded in a certain way. So the immaturity that boys are later to mature, they're later to mature as they go into school, they're later to mature later on. And we're expecting them to step up with a mature adult brain and and. I, I just think that's why I wanted to write the book. I wanted you to understand the world through the lens of a boy who has a very um, rapid changes in his brain, his body, his his psychology, his <laughs> cognitive processing, his emotional brain, so that most days he does not want to get out of bed and be grumpy and moody and disrespectful. However, it happens even before he knows it has, and he's probably got, a, you know, a randomly erect penis that he hasn't even noticed as well. So it's all going down. And then people laugh at them and make fun of them, which just causes more shame and more self-despair. So if we were to summarise, because unfortunately our time is up, uh, what do you think the, the three most important things are for mums and dads? Well, let's, uh, let's face it, the village. We, yeah. we talk about these lighthouse figures, Maggie, and I love that because my, my mantra for our children has always been it takes a village. And, and as parents trying to surround our children with, you know, strong – um, figures that they can look up to and they can turn to because there are sometimes we just don't want to go to mum or you just don't want to talk to dad and you know to be blessed with people in your life who will invest in your children is so imperative so so I call it a boy tribe and yeah. it's really interesting that there's this incredible shift in boys when they are around people who love them when they were young boys it's crazy they just melt into this different space. So boy tribe is absolutely fundamental, Justin, in this. Two is that we need to be able to understand exactly the changes that are going on and see the world through that poorly developed brain and all those things. And the third one, you just have to love them fiercely, unconditionally, um, over and over, do everything you can to connect in a way that they know it. And I used to do little things like um, randomly sit on them on the couch, uh, tread on their foot or um, bump them sometimes um, or make them their favourite um, supper when they least deserved it because I want them to know that I'm not backing away and I've got your back all the way through 
There's nothing you'll do that will stop me loving you. That's what they need. Beautiful. Such a great conversation. I wish we could talk to you all day. We should do this more, Maggie. Uh, Maggie Dent is the queen of common sense. She's the author of Mothering Our Boys. Oh, in fact, the author of a bunch of books, but the most recent one, From Boys to Men. And if you're a parent of boys, this is a book that really needs to be on your bedside table and um, it becomes your Bible in some way, if, if I can use that metaphor. Hey, we really appreciate you, Maggie. Thanks so much for sharing your wisdom with us on the Happy Families podcast. Thank you so much, you guys. Bye. The Happy Families podcast is produced by Justin Ruan from Bridge Media. Craig Bruce is our executive producer. And we hope that you've loved it and that it's made your family happier. If it has, please jump onto Apple Podcasts and leave a five-star rating and review because when you do that, other people find out about the podcast and then they get to listen to it and make their family happier. And everyone makes well um, we get to build up that village that maggie was talking about Uh, in the meantime if you'd like more info about making your family happier you can check out maggie's website i really recommend you have a look at uh, what maggie has to offer or you can visit mine uh, happyfamilies.com.au